coming, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Now, Mark, you said you've seen this thing five times now, right? Yeah, my fifth and you finally figured it out on the fourth viewing. Uh, <laughs> you thought you did. Okay, new clues were revealed this viewing? No. Okay. No. Well, do you think that, what, what wisdom about that story do you have to impart to these people, or do they even need to know? Well, I'd like to ask uh, the lovely people who came here, what, what do you think? Uh, where do we go right? Where do we go wrong? Uh, what do we do? Uh, does, it, does, it, does it have the, to me, I think the, the thing about Sunrise Cop is just like it's just, you know, just raw and genuine. That's, that's what I think it's all about, you know, warts and all. So, like, what do you think? Well, your chides are Chinese, uh, aren't they? The Yakuza are uh, yeah. Japanese, yeah. But before I forget, let's hear it for kale chips, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, now, when you first heard that there was going to be, well, no, actually, I learned new information today. When the idea of a sequel was first discussed, Matt Hammond, the samurai cop, was still dead. Tell me about that. Yeah, we all thought that the math is dead. In fact, when this started happening, uh, I was in Florida, Jacksonville area, and I was, uh, I'll take care of my mother, she's, uh, she's left us now, but I was living with her, and I would just go to the library just to get out of the house. And I started getting emails from people around the world. And when I mean around the world, I mean around the world. Ireland, Croatia, Australia, and they started talking about Samurai Cop 1. And like, you know, it was like 25 years ago. And I think it was this new generation that found them. And so eventually I went to California because I kept hearing that uh, they were having screenings and, and out here the crowds were really big crowds or whatever. So I said, okay, I'm gonna go to California to check it out. And I used to live right around the corner from the New Art Theater uh, where it played and it seats about four or 500 people and we had a midnight showing and it was packed. I mean, it was like, <laughs> Four or five hundred people. It was amazing. I just watched the people watch it. They just really loved it. So I think Greg got involved. Other, other people got involved, and they said, "Well, we're going to make a sequel." And also, we thought like Matt had passed away because there was a, uh, an actor by the same name, another Matt Hannon, who had died. And uh, Matt, the Samurai Cop, thought this movie was terrible. He didn't want anything to do with it, <laughs> so he just let it go. <laughs> I'm dead too. So that's what happened. So eventually. Uh, when the fans started coming around and I started speaking to Greg, and at this time we didn't know that Matt was dead, the storyline was going to be that uh, I was going to be the cop, Frank, and Caden Cross was going to be Matt's and Joe Marshall's daughter. And then we were going to go try to find out who killed the samurai cop. That was going to be the storyline. And then eventually Matt showed up on YouTube and everything changed. <laughs> So what is, what is the reference uh, or wink to the original that you were most pleased and then what did, what did you kind of get bummed that you guys had to leave out? Well, uh, I, don't, I, I don't know if everybody got the black gift situation. Did you, did you get that? Uh, you remember the scene in the first one when they tried to castrate me? That's when I had a box out of The result situation, that, that was my line. <laughs> So, you know, there's obviously the faces. They had to make the faces. And um, so we were thinking about, like, okay, Mark, where are you going to put the faces? So eventually, I, I, I said, also, I wanted to have some type of love scene because, you know, in the first one, I didn't get any women, man. No, <laughs> got all the women. So, so I said, give me a girl or something, you know? So we got, we got me a girl. We got a porn star, Misty Stone, who's a really nice girl. And uh, she just took up all her clothes. And I said, this is the perfect time. <laughs> And before I forget, a round of applause for kombucha, ladies and gentlemen. 
Um, I was cast as um, Robert Zadar's henchman, and um, I touched down in LA, and I had been told I was going to be in a cop film, and I, you know, Henry Silva was attached at the time, George Lazenby, Stuart Whitman, all these 70s kind of gritty, tough guys that I was like really keen on starring with. That's why I said yes to the role. Um, so I touched down in LA. Uh, I find out that none of those guys were in the movie any longer. I find out that Robert Zadar had been snowed in at Chicago O'Hare and wasn't gonna make the LA trip. And then poor old Robert later went to a convention in Pensacola and died. Uh, he never got to film his part for Samurai Cop 2. Um, but here I am in LA, my main point of contact had been arrested for th thieving from the production. And I show up, I finally, you know, get in touch with somebody who was like, hey, where's my, where's my call sheet? I don't, uh, the guy I've been dealing with has been arrested. So I find out what the call sheet is. I go to the sound stage and it's a fucking spaceship. And I'm like, what the hell is this? And at the time, they actually had a version of the script where the complex was going to be in space. <laughs> so I touched down in LA to a very different project to what I said yes for, but uh, it was an interesting thing. And uh, like I was telling some people today, uh, you know, the attempt to you follow up to something like Samurai Cop is very tricky at best. But I think Greg Hatanaka had the best possible approach, and that is just to not feel bound by any normal rules in movie making, not feel bound by any normal rules of storytelling. Uh, one of my favorite memories of the whole thing is I was just about to walk through a scene, a scene that didn't end up in the movie, which happened a lot with me. Um, I was just about to walk through a scene, and Greg, right before cameras rolled, Greg leaned over to me and was like, hey, do this scene like a robot, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, who wants to ask Mark about either Samurai Cop? Uh, this hand in the back has been up for quite a while. Oh, well, I just wanted to say that I thought you were the best actor in both films, but Matt... Why, thank you. Oh. <laughs> but okay. Matt improved a lot in 25 years. Right. Uh, we, we discussed this. Because uh, Matt, you know, as I was telling Mike, Mike today, uh, Matt really says he's a stand-up comic. Uh, obviously, I've never seen him do his, you know, his <laughs> stick. I, I would love to see him. <laughs> but uh, we just had, because I'm a serious actor. I don't know if you can tell that, because I've studied that, I've been doing it for a long time. And so we just had a lot of talking and going back and forth. And I, basically, I just told him where I was at is that just, just, just listen to each other. Just listen to each other. And then, it, then it's real. Also, we had a lot of say in the dialogue. A lot of his stuff Matt wrote, I wrote a little bit there. And so uh, I think he just took it more seriously. And again, you know, he was listening. And I think our relationship, it, it grew this way. I think we just have a really good relationship on screen, you know. Uh, that's what people say, that's what's going on with the reviews. And I kind of see that when we, uh, we did the commentary, we kind of talked a little bit about it. Yeah, it's just like there's something that goes on between me and him that's like, it seemed like it's somewhat genuine. And also something just came to mind, and Drake wanted me to say, the DVD is coming out January 15th, Target, Walmart, and everything. Check out what it may or may not feature as an extra the arrest footage of that guy I was telling you about. Uh, they were rolling cameras on that guy getting hauled off, actually. 